finished with you, you'll no longer be yourself. I remember. I remember everything. The fact that you are a character that is uttered in the same breath as James Bond, I mean, that is cool. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely, you know, and a lot of that's down to Doug Lyman, who directed the first movie. In our very first meeting, he was talking about Bond, and he was saying, well, he's this kind of 60s character with 60s values, and I don't really relate to him, and I feel like there's this vacuum, and I, we, we could put in a, a spy who's kind of our guy, who's like somebody that we relate to, and that was literally the very first pitch he gave me about Jason Bourne, and he was really right. We've just been hacked. Could be worse than Snowden. Facial recognition got a hit. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Why would it come back now? Well, Alicia, we first met on the red carpet at the Sydney premiere, yeah. and I was amazed to find out that was going to be the first time you saw Jason Bourne. Did I look terrified? I remember I was just walking there, I'm like, I'm so nervous. Were you? You hit it, hit it very well. This time was the first time I was like, I'm stepping in there, and I have no idea. So what did you think? I thought it was a good ride. I really enjoyed it. He's seen things. He knows things. What if he's not coming for us? What if it's something else? What about when you're on screen? What What's that experience like for you as a viewer? As soon as I hear my voice, I kind of cringe. And that just doesn't go away. Um, it's, it's really tough to, I don't know. So as an actor, is there, is there kind of, is there a routine or a mantra or is there a last thought just before they say rolling action. Brando said something years ago to um, Duval, and, and it was passed on to me, and I think people, it's been said publicly, Brando would say, um, just because they say action doesn't mean you have to do anything. You know, some people, because of that, like Clint Eastwood doesn't even say action. He just goes, go ahead. Yeah. You know, and, and it's so that you kind of maintain that relaxation and that, you know, so it's not action and you're suddenly acting. There's a demonstration in front of the Greek parliament building. I think she'll use it as cover. They tracked you. We gotta move. Even with a, a budget of over $100 million, are there things that you wish you could have put in there but you just couldn't afford? No, this is pretty big. Like, yeah. this one was... This is the Vegas scene. The Vegas scene. Like, we definitely... I mean, once we learned we could, act, we could get that location, I mean, that's... Big to do the Vegas Strip is like is huge. I never thought we'd get it, so we really went for it. Did you have a favorite scene? Yeah, I I, I think I, I really we went to Washington, and it's something about when you get to do a scene in an environment where it's you know it's actually set. It's a scene when I stand there and I put my leather gloves on and I step in to have a little meeting in a, a car with the head of CIA. Just because it was a moving car, we only had like the smallest camera and a little mic. So it's almost like you forget that you're actually shooting a big popcorn action movie. Interestingly enough, the work, you, I, I even thought it was gonna be different but then uh, within the actors you meet in the morning with the DP and the director and the actors and you go through the scene and then you do it and that is the same with an independent film as for a big studio film it's just that it's a lot more people I volunteered because of a lie would you recommend the job having been inside the mind of a spy I, I would definitely recommend it I mean it's really valuable and important work. I mean, especially today, human intelligence is getting, I think, only more important. And, and it takes a really, really talented and smart person to do it well. You're never gonna find any peace. Not till you admit to yourself who you really are. 